Okay, so where are we here? Here's a dog. That dog is, that's day one, hour one, <coughs> distemper case. How do we identify this? What is this? How do we know that's distemper and not herpes? Okay, that became the major test. If you send the serum to the lab, it takes two to three to five days to get the answer back. Now you're into day six, seven already. Too late to treat. So what have you done in the meantime? You gave him antibiotics, you gave him fluids. Is he still sick? Yeah, he's still sick. Okay? Or you get a conjunctival smear and you send it in for IFA. How long does that take? Three to four days. Dog's still sick. Now you're up to day four, five, or six again. So again, you're pushing the limits of what your stuff can do. So we started, stopped and looked at this and tried to figure out how we could handle this. And what we decided was, one, you pull the blood from the dog to send to the lab. Then you immediately treat the dog. Treat the dog immediately, because if you're wrong, it doesn't make any difference. If you're right, by tomorrow the dog's well. That makes sense. It doesn't cause any harm, and yet it clears the dog. And if it's one of the other viruses and it doesn't do anything, so what? Okay? Now, you need to know whether you have distemper or not. And what we realized was there are several areas where the distemper virus is always found. It's usually found in the conjunctiva. It's almost always found in the macrophages in the, in the lung, but you've got to get that out, and it's hard to do. But there's an easy place to look, and that's in the bladder. The transitional cells in the bladder are highly sensitive and highly reactive to the virus. They always have the virus. So if you have distemper in the acute phase, and you pull cells out of the bladder, which is as easy as passing a catheter, drain the urine out, run it back and forth against the bladder wall, get some cells loose, suck them up into the catheter, bring them out, put them on a slide, dry it, stain them with Difquick, which is every veterinary hospital's got Difquick. The cells with the virus will have red inclusions alongside the nucleus, 80-90% of them. Easy to diagnose. If they're not there, it's not distemper. Easy. If they're there, it's distemper. Come on, what could be easier than that? It's a 10 minute test, 20 minute test, 15 minute test. Simple, fast, yes or no. Okay, in the meantime, you sent the stuff to the lab. Now you've treated the dog, okay? If he had inclusions, tomorrow he's better. If he didn't have inclusions, is he better or not? Yes? Does that show up before anything else, those inclusions, like before a discharge from the nose or the eyes? They show up from the very first minute you see any clinical symptoms, and they last about 10 days in the, in the bladder. After that, they sort of tend to start to disappear. So if you're talking about a dog with seizures, you're not going to find them. And if you look in a dog that's out 21 days, chances are you're not going to find a lot of them. I'm talking about a dog, say, that you get that looks, that looks uh, there, you think there's something wrong with it, but you can't put your finger on it. It doesn't show any outward symptoms except the, Do dog, a bladder study. the dog is not... Uh, if he's got a fever, if he's yeah, got, he's a, got fever, a fever, and its eyes are, are uh, dull. Okay, now look, if he's got a fever, it isn't kennel cough. Kennel cough does not give you a fever, okay? Mm -hmm. Two diseases, three diseases give you a fever. Distemper, herpes, flu. Dog flu, it's starting to show everywhere. Looks like distemper. He's got a fever, runny nose, cough. <laughs> okay, is it distemper or is it flu? Right. How do you tell? Take the test. Well, you can't tell herpes or flu, but you can tell distemper. Yeah. Okay? So what you do is you do the bladder test, and if right. they're not there, it's right. either herpes or flu. Well, the stuff clears herpes. I'll show you that later. But I don't know about the flu because I never got a chance to treat a case. It started out in Florida, and it's moving back this way across the country, and I retired before it ever got to California, so I don't know. It will slow down parainfluenza, which is one of the other kennel cough viruses. Slow it down to the point where it can make it go away. It does treat herpes. And I'll show you respiratory cases of herpes, okay? But how do you know which one it is? Come on, your vet can't tell. He says, hey, you got kennel cough. He gives you an antibiotic, sends you home. Two weeks later, you're back. Your dog's still vomiting. His nose is worse. He's got, now he's got pneumonia. Oh, he says, maybe it wasn't kennel cough. It must have been distemper. Too late. Too late. Now, you, what are you going to do? If you treat, you may get rid of it. You may not. The dog is probably going to get neurologic problems, and he's going to say, "Give it, euthanize it." By that time, you spent seven hundred dollars. Okay, maybe more.